Here we are but straying pilgrims, here our path is often dim, but to cheer us on our journey still we sing this wayside hymn. Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise, soon will be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. Here our feet are often weary on the hills that throng our way. Here the tempest darkly gathers, but our hearts within us say, Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansions rise, soon will be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver gladdens all our longing eyes. Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining us here today to worship our God. We are the few, I'm afraid, that are left in this world that still do this and still do it by the Scripture, by what the Word of God says, not by what somebody else says. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. You know, it's grand to be able to sit here and worship our God Although we're far apart, yet we're still together in spirit, in the great and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for being here. We'll have the same service we've always had. We'll have a couple of songs of praise. We'll have a song to get us ready for the Lord's Supper. Then we'll partake of the Lord's Supper. And then we'll have another song of praise and the lesson. And then an ending song of praise. And then finally, once again, my scriptures will roll up at the end of this video. Please take the time to read them. Please go and see for yourself if this isn't what the Bible says. Again, thank you so much for joining us here today. To begin our worship service, would you bow with me? Father, we, your children, have gathered together here to worship you, our God. Although we're far apart, we're together, Father. Thanks to the blessing of this media and thanks to the blessing of you allowing our spirits to join to worship you, our God. We ask, Father, a blessing upon this worship service and upon ourselves. We ask, Father, that you be with all of those that we've prayed for, that you care for them as they have need and as you will. We ask for your forgiveness for ourselves. We thank you so much for this opportunity. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Again, thank you all so much for joining me here today. We'll begin a worship service now. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes is known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy I feel, the bliss I share, of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such I hasten to the place Where God my Savior shows His face And gladly take my station there And wait for Thee, sweet hour of prayer Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, Thy wing shall my petition bear. To Him whose truth and 
faithfulness engaged the waiting soul to bless and since he bids me seek his face believe his word and trust his grace I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. On Zion's glorious summit stood a numerous host redeemed by blood. They him their king in strains divine. I heard the song and strove to join. I heard the song and strove to join. Here all who suffered sword or flame for truth or Jesus' lovely name shall victory now and hail the Lamb and bow before the great I Am and bow before the great I Am while ever Lasting ages roll, eternal love shall feast their soul, and scenes of bliss forever new rise in succession to their view. Rise in succession to their view. should sing, O Almighty King, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts on high adore, Before we partake of the Lord's Supper today, I'll be reading to you from Ephesians. The second chapter of that book, I'll begin in the 14th verse and following. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off, and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one Spirit to the Father. What a wonderful thought, that because of the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ, because of what he did, we have direct access to our God. He came to this world, he lived, he preached, and he died. And he raised again. And before that, he asked us to remember him and what he was about to do. And that's what we're doing here, is remembering the sacrifice that reconciled us back to our God. This bread, the representation of his body, and this fruit of the vine, the representation of his precious blood. We partake to do just exactly what he asked, to remember Jesus the Christ. I ask that you pause this video while you partake of these implements. 
and then reflect on Jesus Christ for just a few moments and remember what it took to save us from ourselves. Would you bow with me as I ask the blessing for the bread and the fruit of the vine? Father, this morning we, your children, have gathered here together to remember Jesus the Christ, to remember his sacrifice and what he did for us. We ask, Father, a blessing upon this bread, the representation of his precious body, and this fruit of the vine, the representation of his blood that he shed so freely for us. We ask that you allow us to partake them in a manner that's pleasing to you, our God, and we thank you for this opportunity and for these implements that allow us to remember Jesus the Christ. It's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! Shining as the 
sun We've no less days To sing God's praise Than when we first begun Almighty fortress is our God Bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great. Our lesson today comes from Genesis through Psalm of the Old Testament, and then we'll have some readings out of the New Testament. But we're going to begin in the 22nd chapter of Genesis at the 10th verse. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for I know now that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Then we're going to turn over to the next book, Exodus. And there we're going to begin in the fifth chapter. Now a lot of these you've heard, but they deal with the word for today. So bear with me as we read them. Exodus chapter 5, and I'll be there at verse 1. Afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. So they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days' journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Then the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people from their work? Get back to your labor. And Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are many now. And you make them rest from their labor. So the same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, You shall no longer give the people straw to make brick as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. You shall lay on them the quota of bricks which they made before. You shall not reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry out, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let more work be laid on the men, that they may labor in it. And let them not regard false words. Then we're going to the book of Numbers. We're going to be in the 22nd chapter of that book. And I'll begin reading to you there from the 22nd verse. Then God's anger was aroused because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back into the road. And the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn, either to the right hand or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. So Balaam's anger was aroused, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, 
What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have abused me. I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. So the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed his head and fell flat to an, on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside from me these three times. If she had not, surely I would have killed you by now and let her live. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. For I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeases you, I will turn back. And now a very wonderful passage in the Bible. Friends, we're going to be in the 46th Psalm. And I'll begin there at verse 1 and read through the psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns a chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now the Gospel of Matthew. And I'm going to be in the seventh chapter of that Gospel. And these verses are going to sound real familiar to you because we go to them often. I'll start at the seventh verse, the seventh chapter of Matthew. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You'll know them by their fruits. Do, not, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I'll liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and, the, and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell. And great was its fall. Now let's turn over to Mark. The next book over. And I'm going to be there in the 8th 
8th chapter. I'm going to start in the 34th verse. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Okay, over to 2 Timothy. And we're going to be there in the third chapter of 2 Timothy, and I'm going to begin reading to you from the first verse. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captive of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the truth. And finally this morning we're going to be reading from Revelation or in that book, we're going to be in the third chapter. And I'm going to start reading there at the 14th verse and following. And to the angel of the church of Laodicean, write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, and have become wealthy, and have a need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now all of these scriptures today have to do with the, the word for today and that's yada I know that's that's been changed from its original meeting to what we heard on a sitcom sitcom a, a person said oh yeah he was going on and on yada 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 the word yada is to know to know unequivocally to know without doubt, to know for a fact that what is, is. We, Christian brothers and sisters, yada God. We know Him. We've studied Him in His Word. We've seen what He does around us. We've seen His creation. In wonderment, we watch babies born. In wonderment we watch the world move as it moves to know God said that he knew that Abraham loved him because he was going to give up his only son God said stand still and know that I'm the Lord know it it's a fact we read in the gospel one of the saddest things that probably anybody's ever going to have to hear. I don't know you. I don't know you. 
But God, we, we cast out demons in your names, and we did many wonderful works in your name, and, and we did all this and that. And he goes, well, wait a minute. You didn't, you didn't do what I told you to do. I don't know who you are. What a sad day. Yada. To know God. The reverse is does God know you? We know God. Yeah, we know God. Does God know you? That's what we just, that's what we just talked about. Does He know you? Workers of unrighteousness. Well, what's unrighteousness? Well, let's go back to Matthew. Remember what Jesus said when He came up before he went into the water to be baptized, what did he say? Allow it to be so to fulfill all righteousness. There's, there's a lot of places out there, big, big places with thousands of people attending. They stand up and listen to rock bands and hold their hands up. And say, I'm saved because I said the sinner's prayer. I'm saved because I believe. Brothers and sisters, if you believe, you have to believe what the Bible says. And the Bible says several times throughout the book of Acts and through Matthew and Mark to believe and be baptized is to fulfill all righteousness. I fear that if you have not followed the gospel, if you have not put Christ Jesus on in baptism, the day is coming where you'll hear those words, I don't know who you are. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. My contact numbers come up at the beginning of this video. Contact me. Tell me where you are. I'll find somebody there that will help you fulfill and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's easy to do. You hear it, you believe it, you repent of your sins, and you go down with Jesus Christ in a baptismal burial to rise up in a newness of life. That's the gospel. It's been changed. People take bits and pieces out of the Bible and say, oh no, you don't need that. But Mark tells us that Jesus said, if you believe and are baptized, if you don't believe, you're lost. Well, okay, but I believe. It doesn't say believe and not baptize. Well, all right. But if you don't believe it, well, why would bother? Well, why would you bother? God bless you all for being here today. God bless you for joining me. To know, yada, from now on, when you think of God and you see His wonders around you, remember yada to know God. Before we close this morning, would you bow with me one final time? Father, thank you so much for your word, for this opportunity to be here and read from it, to learn of you, our God. Father, there's so many out there that are misled, that are following those false prophets that we're warned about, that are taking them down paths that are untrue. We ask, Father, that you guide them to the light of your word. Allow them to understand that there's only one way to you, and that's through you, through your gospel, and the obedience to that gospel. We ask that you be with us as we go through the remainder of this week, that you allow us to be the bright and shining light that saves those from perdition and darkness. Allow us to help where we can. Please forgive us, Father, and be with all of those that we've prayed for. Thank you so much for being our God. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. Please go and look at these scriptures. They're going to roll up here in just a minute. Look at them. Reread them. And see if what you heard here today isn't exactly what your Bible says. God bless you for being here. Have a wonderful week.
Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today, leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near.